Hello and good day everyone. Welcome to the Live Life Conference 2021. I am Bo. I am RJ Moriones, a lay missionary for the Live Christ Share Christ Mission, serving in the Live Life Pillar. Family is an important component of society and of the church. It is the primary unit of communities and it is the domestic church. That is why in this conference, we wanted to highlight the family and how it can be a source of love and life to every individual, to the community, and to the world. There are many reasons to celebrate this year, even if we are still in the pandemic. The crisis we are in right now will not dampen our spirits to know more about the plan of God for ourselves and for our families. We are happy to share with you this event that will highlight our desire to be a gift to others and our eagerness to celebrate the beauty of marriage, family, and life. The pandemic will not stop us in proclaiming the gospel of life to everyone. We, in Live Life, are empowered by the Holy Spirit to become God's beacon of light to the ends of the earth. As we celebrate 500 years of our Christian faith, and as we observe the Amores Laetitia Family Year, we bring to you the Live Life Conference 2021 Sessions on Demand. We created Sessions on Demand videos to help appreciate the beauty of marriages and family and to develop a society that embraces the culture of life. We want everyone, yes, to be empowered with the truth as we all respond to the constant attack of evil forces against families. We want all of you to appreciate the beauty of life and respond by sharing this gift to everyone. As you watch at the comfort of your homes, we want you to open your mind and heart to everything that will be shared and revealed to you. Be assured that the speakers were handpicked and they are the best in their fields to discuss the topics presented. It will be an exciting opportunity to learn. We have prepared two segments for the workshop, the culture of life and the culture of death. In the culture of life segment, we will highlight ways on how we can build up a strong family for Christ and empower everyone to embrace the gospel of life at home. And as for the culture of death, we will, we will enlighten everyone about the realities of this culture that opposes God's way for families and marriages. We will offer to our participants ways on how to address these issues and become a light to everyone. We promise you that these online sessions will help and equip us to further the mission of proclaiming the gospel of life to everyone. Let us be bearers of God's light to the world. Let us lead everyone back home so that they may see God's amazing love and beautiful plan for every family. Have a grace-filled day ahead of you. Enjoy and God bless. I'm Maribel Descaliar. I'm the LCSE uh, coordinator for the women's evangelization work in the United States. Uh, we call the evangelization uh, a platform the Mary's Virtual Coffee Club. So I'm here. I was invited to give a talk on uh, grandparents uh, being a treasure in the family. And it's my honor uh, to be with you. So let me start the talk by sharing uh, a PowerPoint presentation on uh, this talk. Uh, I'm so proud to say that I'm presenting my parents uh, to you. Uh, they're both still with us and they are both loved, very much loved by our family. My father is uh, 89 years old and my mother is 90 years old. So I, I ask for your prayers too, as I honor them in this talk. So today, as I was uh, asked to give this talk, I am to 
just uh, share with you that uh, this year, uh, Pope Francis has actually instituted this year to be the year of the grandparents and the elderly. And um, okay, let me just uh, share the screen again. He's, uh, he mentioned uh, in January that uh, his priority, the priority of his pontificate will be about the poor, the Bible, and the elderly. So he said that uh, this would be his priorities because uh, this would, th these are destined uh, to mark the future of the church. It's about the way Jesus lived and the focus of Jesus was uh, on the word of God, the poor, and the elderly. The elderly because uh, they are considered like the fathers of the church. So in the family, they would be the fathers you know, uh, of the family. All right. So he then mentioned that uh, the pastoral care of the elderly uh, is a priority that can no longer be postponed by any Christian uh, community. He also said that we must treasure the spiritual and human wealth. That's how he called it. That has been handed down from generation to generation. And uh, this, as he said, that uh, this pastoral care of the elderly is, are the first fruits of the Amoris Letitia, uh, the family year, the year of the family in 2021, which we are celebrating. And this is about the joy of the family, the joy of uh, being in the human family and the gift of the family. And this is what this conference is all about. And I'm truly honored to be able to share about this, not just because of my parents being uh, grandparents, but I am a grandmother myself, and it's just a joy and an honor to be one. All right, so let us proceed. He then mentioned that um, he declared the fourth Sunday of July, which we uh, celebrated uh, to be the year of the uh, grandparents and the elderly. It's, it was a church-wide celebration. It was, um, he did this because it was close to the liturgical memorial of Saints Joachim and Anne, who are the grandparents of Jesus, and they were the parents of our Mother Mary. So in that sense, the patron saint, the patron saint of the elderly and the grandparents is Saints uh, Joachim, and Saint Anne. Pope Francis reminds us that old age is a gift. So let me just uh, put that on the screen again. He mentioned that the old age is a gift and that grandparents are the link between the different generations to pass on to the young, the experience of life. Meaning to say, um, our young people, whether your parents, young parents, or the grandchildren, or the young adults, these are the different generations. We all learn about life because this emanates from our grandparents. And if we are grandparents now, this becomes our duty. The Holy Spirit, even today, stirs up thoughts and words of wisdom in the elderly. The voice of their elderly is precious, he said, because it sings the praises of God and preserves the root of the people. What does that mean? It means that uh, 
this Holy Spirit is life, is the giver of life. And so it is the Holy Spirit who stirs up the stream of generations. And therefore, this it all begins from the grandparents, passed on to the parents, the young children, the young parents, and then to, to the young, to the children or the children of their children, their grandchildren. And Pope Francis reminds us that the voice of the elderly is precious. Why? Because it is impacted with wisdom. All the years of experiences, remember the cliche, experience is the best teacher and who else has the longest experience but the grandparents. And uh, Pope Francis further says that the voice of the elderly is precious. He said, because it sings the praises of God and preserves the roots of the people. That's why in our mother church, you know, if you'll notice, uh, our mother church has preserved the tradition where we're in. We have learned what we have learned in our faith through the fathers of the church. And the role of the grandparents is close to that, the fathers of the church, because that, that is where wisdom, it has been, you know, uh, preserved and has emanated and has been passed on from the bishops to the priests to the lay people. And so it is with us, or, or it is with grandparents. Such wealth comes from them, wealth of knowledge, wealth of experience, wealth of pain, how they have uh, overcome the pain, how they have overcome uh, all obstacles in life. You know, Pope Francis was even talking about stories of the war and uh, the generations of like uh, St. John Paul II, or some of our grandparents who has been through wars, they have wealth of stories to share. There's wealth of wisdom in that experience. You know, survivors, uh, how they have survived the war, the experiences, the lessons of the hardships is what they pass on and has become the wisdom uh, to generations. And that is the role of uh, the grandparents. And then um, Pope Francis continues to say that um, the elderly must not be forgotten. He says, why? Because like in the scriptures, the prophet Joel says, grand parents seeing their grandchildren's dream while young people drawing strength from their grandparents will go forward and prophesy. Remember in the scriptures, Joel says, um, young men will dream dreams, you know, and grandparents are often forgotten and we forget this wealth of preserving roots and passing on what the elderly have received. So that's why he was saying there is really truly a connection in fulfilling the dreams of the young as they honor their grandparents. The fulfillment of the dreams of the young and the society will happen only if we know how to treasure, how to honor the elderly. They must never be forgotten. Unfortunately, in some societies today, in some societies today, the grandparents are not being honored. In fact, they are being reckoned as a, um, as a disturbance, disturbance from the comforts of life, the comforts of uh, society, the advancement of society, 
There was one story that uh, I'd like to share at this point where a, gra- a Filipina uh, grandparent, grandmother, she was in her 60s and uh, she was on her way to church in New York. She was on her way to church and guess what happened? She became a victim to a hate crime. And so what happened was she was just walking innocently. She said she was rushing for mass. And then suddenly a big burly man just, you know, crashed into her, kicked her, and really punched her all over. And what was the sad thing that happened there? It was recorded on video. There were bystanders uh, and also somebody who was just right across the shop wherein the video footage was shown. He just closed the door. He did not even run to help the grandmother when she was being mugged and uh, she was being beaten. She was able to survive. And now, in fact, she has been proclaiming forgiveness because that's what she offered. What a beautiful way. What a treasure, really, this elderly is. She was able to, you know, after that horrible experience, now she's proclaiming the truth, God's love, through forgiveness. All she talks about right now is how she has forgiven her. Imagine, but of course, uh, that person is in jail right now, her tormentor. Okay, so this is how society forgets uh, grandparents, the treasure of grandparents. So what does Pope Francis say? He continues to say that grandparents has spiritual powers. Grandparents have spiritual powers of memory, prayer, and dreams. Memory. They are able to pass on the stories of their their own grandparents, the treasure that they have kept in their memory. And they're able to pass on to their children and children of their children about stories of victories, inspiring stories of life. You know, just like in the movies, they have better movies to share because of the beautiful memories that they carry and pass on uh, to, to their children, children's children. Next is the spiritual power of prayer. Most, I I don't know about you, but I have learned also my faith, not only from my mother, but also from my grandmother. Throughout the day, she carried her rosary. That was how she carried, that was how she passed on the faith. She was a teacher, but she never taught me directly about religion. But how did I pick it up? I picked it up, I picked it up by her witnessing. All she did was to pray the rosary every day, especially in her last days. She was seated in her rocking chair, and that was what she did. She passed on the faith to me and to my other sisters through her life. Just a life of prayer. Right now, I don't know. I think no one knows if we are able to pass on the faith correctly to our grandchildren, to our children or grandchildren. But one thing that touches my heart is some comments that they give, indications that we must be doing something right. After all, I remember my grandchildren, my grandchild, you know, he was uh, telling his dad, my son, one day, he says, you know, Lolly Marie Bell, all she does is pray, 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 work, 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 
and church, church, church. You know, he said it in jest, but in my heart, I said, oh, wow, that is how I must be touching this child because that is his way of describing my life or my day as he observes it is to be with him. This is the power of grandparenting, I guess, because we really don't know, but it is by the language that they speak about or the way they describe us as grandparents that we will able, be able to know whether God is doing something. And that's why Pope Francis calls it a spiritual power. And lastly, he talked about dreams. Why dreams? Because our children continue to dream about a better future. But they don't know what the results will be. It is us as grandparents or our grandparents, stories about our grandparents, our own grandparents that we pass on to them, where we are able to show them that dreams can become realities. You know, stories about uh, hard work and how uh, I remembered my grandmother. Uh, she was a teacher and, you know, she was very much loved by all of my aunties, of course, my mother and all of my uh, siblings and dad, uh, my aunties and cousins and all they talked about was the goodness of my grandmother and how she was able to survive the war, how she was able to, you know, uh, stand up. She was a widow because my grandfather apparently passed on at a very early age. So she took it upon herself to just raise uh, her daughter. So these are victories. These are stories of victories showing our uh, children and grandchildren that dreams could come true if all are anchored on the Lord. And that's why Pope Francis calls it the spiritual power. Next, uh, Pope Francis says, the elderly are not saved by themselves. He says that young people Adults and our society cannot save themselves without the elderly. Every society needs to come to terms with its roots and develop a new synthesis of its values, starting also from the dialogue with the elderly. Again, the experience, the wisdom of the elderly. Imagine a society not knowing what happened in its roots, you know? Imagine a community or a family not recognizing its roots. What happened during their time, right? What can we pick up? What can we learn? What can we learn? We must treasure the elderly people in our midst whether in society, in the church, in the communities, or in the family. Because we cannot move forward, we cannot save ourselves without learning about our roots. How did it all begin? How was it during their time? How did they surpass or overcome crisis? And how did they become victorious? So that's what Pope Francis says. Next, he talks about the promise of the Lord. I am with you always in Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always. The faithfulness of the Lord. The promise of the Lord, I am with you always. So it is with us 
with our care for the elderly, we must also promise to the Lord that we will be with them always, always and always. In some societies, you know very well how uh, the elderly are being abandoned and neglected, you know. Yes, I would say that um, there are institutions for the elderly so that they could get better care, probably because they need medical care, which cannot be given at home. And so they have to be placed in institutions. But it's our attitude about that. So what do we do about that? Are we just going to leave them there or are we going to, you know, I remember when my mother-in-law was uh, uh, was in that stage and uh, because she was sick, she was, she met an accident and so it was a brain injury. So she had to be uh, home uh, in an elderly care. And uh, one thing beautiful with my in-laws was, was that, you know, they took care, they took turns and made sure that somebody was there to check on her every day, every day. That is something that may not be available for all of us. But then again, at this age, we all have the online uh, video communications, the, we have the platforms to be able to connect, right? So are we connecting? The thing is, we, we need to make them feel the promise of the Lord that he will always be with them always. We too will become, will reach that stage. I hope we will remember and carry in our hearts how we have cared for the elderly. And so we can really face the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I also was with them like you were. I took care of them. I gave it my all, although I couldn't give 100%, but I did my best to be with them. And I also kept my promise. Next is the vocation of the grandparents of every age. What is their vocation? First is uh, in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, it's about passing on the faith, you know. Let me just uh, read to you uh, quickly what this passage is. Uh, in Matthew uh, 28, 19 to 20, it's about uh, going, therefore, and making disciples of all nations. Whatever age, every baptized Christian, whether a child, a little child, or an elderly person, it never stops. It is still the vocation of every baptized Christian, even of the grandparents. So even if you are a grandparent, you're still called to go to the ends of the earth. We are called to preserve our Christian roots. We are called to pass on the faith to our young and care for the faith of our little ones. So we must remember, how do we preserve our Christian roots? Simply by living out the, um, the scriptures, reading the scriptures and praying with the scriptures every day. We continue to do so and still apply it in our daily lives. It never stops. Like uh, Pope Francis was saying, Jesus never retired. So there is no retirement for a Christian. Every Christian continues and uh, Work works at his vocation until the end of time, and more especially with all, passing on the faith to our young within the family. As I mentioned, you know, our uh, witnessing is more powerful 
than the words that we will use, right? So uh, was it St. Francis who said that, uh, you know, words may not really be necessary for a weaknessing, but it is just use words only when necessary, but it is what they see in us as grandparents or what we see in them that uh, we are, we can show them that our vocation continues on at every age and we care for our little ones in, in this manner. Next is the aspirations of the elderly. What are the aspirations of the elderly? It, it's always to be cared for and not to be neglected. And more so especially, not to be discarded, not to be euthanized and to still be useful. This is a very important uh, aspect of caring for the elderly. Why? As I mentioned, some societies or maybe even some attitudes of people who see them as a, um, as a nuisance, as an obstacle to progress, as an obstacle uh, to society. And so what do they do? They just sometimes ignore them. A little things like our grandchildren. Do we teach our grandchildren to introduce their grandparents to their friends? Or to just be passed, you know, just pass by and uh, ignore their presence? You know, in this society, um, it's like the throwaway mentality where uh, you just, when an person is not useful anymore. So what do you do? Just discard the person. In fact, in this modern, the postmodern age, they call it the cancel culture. You know, cancel culture meaning to say, you try to eliminate people, you try to eliminate those uh, and, you know, just, preserve whoever is use, useful. So this person is old, so let's take away that person. This person is no longer useful. I need to have a new face. So let's just throw away this person, discard this person, forgetting the wisdom, forgetting the experience, for, forgetting um, all the wealth that the Lord has actually bestowed upon the elderly. And so the next thing that we do, if we carry on that mentality, is that when they get sick, we don't want to be burdened, right? It's going to be burdensome. It's going to take a lot of my time. And especially if they're dying and okay. So what do you do? Especially in some countries where euthanasia is... Uh, is legalized, like here in the United States, a number of states uh, where youth, euthanasia is legal. You know, we have some members who own a, um, a, a home for the elderly, and they testify that the families really, you know, uh, ask from the courts to allow them to euthanize uh, their own parents, their own grandparents. What a pain, right? What a pain. It, just because they're old and they're helpless. And how scary for us. Remember, everyone will reach that point. Everyone will reach that point. And how horrible it will be for you to know that people would like to schedule your death. One of our members here in the United States was sharing that, you know, she had to put a crucifix, she had to put holy water upon that grandparent because that grandparent is scheduled to be killed. And uh, 
she really made sure, you know, that uh, she cast that she cast the evil one. She did everything possible in her hands to protect her uh, from being euthanized. But the thing is, in the end, that elderly person is the one who also asked for it. This is the reality of the situation of the elderly. Next is there is a need for them. There is a longing for them to still be useful. Sometimes their opinions don't want to be heard like the young people who don't want any opinion from the elderly or the elderly who just wants to show help. You know, they just want to help around. But since they're old and they couldn't put things perfectly together, so sometimes uh, they, they are not wanted. They would not be wanted to be around. I ask you, uh, dear viewers, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I ask you to reflect at this point. What if you were in the place of these elderly people? How would it feel to be discarded? How would it feel that you are being scheduled to be euthanized and that you are no long, longer useful? Next is the prayer of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. You know, uh, he he retired because he was he knew that his time was uh, going to be short and he might not be able to give justice to his work. And so the prayer that he said was that the prayer of the elderly can protect the world helping it perhaps more effectively than the frenetic activity of many others. He, what, this is all encompassing, saying that the prayer of the elderly people can protect the world if only people will know how to treasure, how to respect, how to honor the elderly. So we reflect at this point, how do we look at our seniors, how do we do we you know want to just discard them because they you need uh, you, you don't see their value in society, you don't see their value in the church, you don't see their value in wherever sphere you are in. So we are being invited at this point to to reflect. And lastly the prayer of Pope Francis for the elderly. He says, may every grandfather, every grandmother, every older person, especially those among us who are most alone, receive the visit of an angel. My challenge to you, dear viewers, is Desire to be that angel. Desire to be that angel. Remember the elderly or your friends who are elderly or your uncles and aunts who are elderly. Seek them out. Seek them out right now. Right at this moment, after this viewing, give them a call or give them a visit. Send them flowers or make them feel that you're there. Be an angel. Visit. Be the visit of an angel today. So I leave you with this. And I thank you for this moment. Thank you for the honor of being able to um, be able to share this reflection for the elderly, for the grandparents as treasures. God bless you all.